Hello, I'm John Paul and I'm here at Rimmer Brothers to set the valve clearances on this 1976 Land Rover Series 3 88. Setting the valve clearances on these old cars is, is, a, is a great thing to do. It, um, it's not like the modern cars, I mean, these weren't quite as efficient and, and they, they setting the valve clearances and just keeping everything a little bit tip top, it just improves, improves the volumetric efficiency, it makes them just a little bit nice, it makes them start better, not smoke as much and just run better. So it, it really is a, a great thing to do the valve clearances and the, the first thing we're going to do is take off this induction pipe here so we can see the rocker cover. So that's what we're going to do first, just a jubilee clip at each end and the clip in the centre. I've taken off the induction pipe that goes from the air filter house into the inlet manifold. Now we're going to take off the, the three half inch spanner size. I know this is back in the old world now, but these are in an old world car, so they are half inch, which is very similar to 13 mil. So you need to take three nuts off the top. The breather pipe to, from the uh, breather on top of the rocker box, just pull that off put it to one side and then we can lift out the uh, the rocker cover. Now on the early ones, uh, the original early ones of these Land Rovers, the, the heater pipe, the bracket at the back was actually fixed to the pipe. So if that was the case, you would either have to just bend up the little bracket or you would have to drain the water and remove the heater hose from the heater box so you can move it out of the way. But on this one, it does actually, it is a flexible one. So we'll be able to take it off and then just spin it out of the way. So that's the three nuts off the top, we've moved out the way the, the heater hose bracket and then it's just a case of lifting out the rocker cover. Now what we'll do here, we'll get the new gasket, we'll clean all this up now and, we'll, and then we'll put some Hylamar on it or if it's a type of gasket that's got the sticky thing on already, you can stick it on but I will do this now and then put it on a flat surface so when you come to put it back together, the new gasket is already stuck to the rocker cover so it's just, it doesn't fall off, it's just nice and easy to be stuck on for a few minutes before you replace it. Here you can see the rockers that push down the valves to open them via the push rods which is connected to the camshaft or run on the camshaft. Now the way I use, uh, the way I set these valve clearances is to get, if you get number one in an exhaust rocking, you set number four and if you get set number three rocking, you'll set number two. Then you get number four rocking, you'll set number one, get number two rocking and you'll set number three. So you, that, that's the way I work it. Um, we'll, we'll go through that again. I'll do a, a little bit of a uh, more explaining thing after we've done it. But And also, the valve clearances, which I will show you in a moment with the feeler gauge, which is, is the gap in between the rocker and the top of the valve. The inlets and exhaust are different on these particular vehicles. Some are different, some aren't. Generally, the exhaust valves have a, a bigger gap than the inlets because they get hotter. So as they get hotter, the, the gap will decrease a little bit. And to say which, to, so you can tell which one is the exhaust and the inlet, on these, if you look at the exhaust valve and the inlet, uh, sorry, exhaust manifold and the inlet manifold, you can see the ports. So the end one is an exhaust, then the next one you can see is an inlet, then the next one is an inlet, then the next one's an exhaust, exhaust, inlet, inlet, exhaust. But if you look at where they're opposed to, that's the, that's the way you tell. Now you do have to turn the engine over obviously to, to, to get all the valves rocking where you need them rocking at the time. This one's brilliant because it's got a starting handle that goes through the front bumper straight onto the end of the crank so I can use that. If you've got one of them that is definitely the easiest way to do it but if you haven't got one of those you can either put a spanner on the end of the alternator and then just pull the belt, do it in the clockwise direction so it's in the general direction of rotation. Uh, or you can get a spanner on the on the bottom crank pulley, whichever you do, but you do have to turn the engine over. I've turned the engine over now, and I've got number one, inlet and exhaust both rocking, so I'm going to set number four. Now, I'll get my feeler gauges. It's 25 thou for the exhaust gap. So if I can just, I'll try and do it this way so I can show you what I'm doing. So you just put your feeler gauge in, in between top of the valve, and the rocker that was, is a little bit tight. They do generally get tight because the valves wear into the head just slightly. So you just slacken it off with your spanner, undo the center screw, just a fraction because it won't take very much. I mean, bear in mind this is 25 thousandths of an inch so it is a fairly small gap. And then if you can just push and pull the feeler gauge and just so it wants to be tight but you do want to be able to move it. That's about fine. So what we'll do then is you'll get your spanner on the lock nut, then you'll hold the centre screw thread and you tighten it up, it's just nice and tight, 
then just recheck it. So just push and pull, and that's great. So now I'll check the inlet one, because it's either 10 thou, well that is quite loose. So same again, we will slacken off the lock nut, the screwdriver on the center thread, tighten it up, just slightly, not too much. And again, just a little bit tighter. It's probably an easy one to see. So you can see, you can just push and pull. You can feel it just dragging. That feels about right. So get the spanner back on the lock nut. Hold the center, just the thread. Tighten it up. Recheck, and they're done. So now we'll get back on the starting handle. I'll turn the crankshaft over again, and then we'll get number two three rocking and we'll set number two. I've turned the engine over so I've got number three rocking. What I mean by rocking is, is one valve is coming up and, and as, as it, just as it gets to the top and the other one starts to go down, it's just that rock in between. And if you ever rock the engine backwards and forwards, you'll see they are just starting to rock like that. So now we can set number two. So inlet first, 10 thou. It's fairly loose. I'm just gonna slacken off the lock nut. My screwdriver in the adjust. There. This one's fairly tight. There we go. So you just screw that down a little bit. So it's just, just grabbing. That's quite nice. Tighten it up. Yeah, that's great. Then with the 25 thou. I'll do the same with the exhaust. And then it's just a case of turning the engine over again. So now number four will rock and you'll set number one. And then number two will rock and you'll set number three. And once they're all set, we can then put the rocker cover back on. Now after I cleaned off the old gasket, I cleaned up the surface where the new gasket is going to sit. Just put a bit of hard amar on it or gasket gear, whatever you've got really. Then I've just put the gasket in place and I've just laid it on a flat surface so it's nice and stuck on there. So when I refit it, the gasket doesn't fall off. And then around where the rocker cover is going to fit, around the gap where the gasket is going to sit, just clean all the oil off, make sure it's all nice and clean, and then we can replace it. So that's the rocker cover back on, reconnected the breather pipe, put the induction pipe back on, tightened it up, and that's it, we're ready to start. Just remember, if you're using a starter handle, take it out, or if you're using spanners on any other pulleys, make sure you take them out before you try to restart the engine.